Hi guys. Hello, Emma Davis here. It is um, day seven of a 30 day live and I'll just invite some friends and today we're going to talk about um, creating a great team or support crew for your veterinary career or for your veterinary business and I am speaking from experience because I have an amazing crew who's helping me um, in my business and in this all important startup phase. So yeah, so if you're a business or if you're just um, launching out um, in your veterinary career, it's really important to think about who you are spending your time with. And um, I think that's my offsider there who's kept us going this week while I've been away at a, um, Luke Hawkins coaching. Hi, Denise. And um, of course, and I've had the amazing Ruby, who's my um, personal assistant, keeping the fort, like holding the fort for me, and also was the big week of migrating our website. So she's had her work cut out for her and been so amazing to report back to me every night and to get some guidance from me. And um, uh, yeah, so just keep everything rolling along um, while I wasn't able to be accessible all the time. And so I just encourage you to think about who your support crew are and um, you want that because then you get um, the support you need to turn up to be the best you every day. And because we're all built differently and other people have different skills and attributes and um, can really add value to your business or your career. So, um, so how do we find this great team? I've got four tips today to talk about how we find this great team to build your business or a successful veterinary career. I tend to think of veterinary careers as a business because basically as a vet, you as a you know technician, you are the asset and you are um, your main money making ability is in that um, veterinary role like consulting and or using your technical knowledge um, in a consultancy and things like that. So you're the asset, you're the technical one, and then you need a crew of people around you. Um, that might be like your family members or um, good friends or yeah, virtual assistant or personal assistant um, to actually fulfill some tasks for you and take the pressure off so you can focus on being amazing at the things that um, you make money out of and then you can use people to support you otherwise. So thanks Ruby for keeping everything running this week in my absence. <laughs> so my tips for um, finding this amazing team and or attracting them to you is to think about the tasks at hand. So we all have a range of tasks um, when we're trying to achieve an outcome. And um, as the main technician, um, you shouldn't really do um, what I call the $25 um, dollar an hour task. Now Ruby's worth much more than that. But um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can delegate away. Um, and basically you should be earning much more money than that um, in your hours. So it's not worth your effort and energy going into those tasks. You need to get the people around you um, that you can trust and you can, hi Adele, and that you can hand those on to. Um, so how you attract them is you've got to know what your vision is and know what your why is, your why is, <laughs> and um, tell people about it so that they are drawn to you. Um, so you want to um, encourage people to you that share your vision for what you're trying to achieve. So I will talk often about veterinarycareers.com.au um, and the vision we have to have veterinarians build amazing careers and careers that they love. And likewise with my coaching, it's the same thing. I want to turn vets from surviving into thriving. And so the team that I'm collecting around me is just amazing because we all share that vision. But if I wasn't clear on that vision, then I couldn't um, put it out there and I couldn't attract those people that are going to help me to get there. Um, so know and share your vision is tip number one. Um, tip number two is check as you're going through the selection um, process and the interview process, check what their goals are and um, what they want out of their career because everyone's um, got ideas of what they want out of their working life 
and you want to um, make sure that you're onboarding team members that um, like it's no good onboarding them there's a lot of effort and money and time goes into bringing someone on if they're you know just starting um, their own business and they just want to do this for two months while they um, get something else started now if they um, if it's in alignment then that might be fine and it might suit both um, parties really well but it's also a good chance to really hear their heart and who they are and their big goals and you should really encourage people and, and take people on that have big goals because they're the kind of people that you want to have on your team that are going to be working hard that have got passion um, that will step up that will take responsibility and um, yeah so don't be worried if they've got big career aspirations but just make sure that you guys have got enough synergy that it's going to be a beautiful arrangement for um, a decent period of time um, then when you're onboarding them um, part of that too is finding out what tasks they love and what they're really good at and yeah which ones they really enjoy and then try and think about if they match the tasks that you're actually recruiting for at the minute and the more that you can get people to do what they love obviously you'll they'll love it more and you'll get better work results as well and then when you've got a team you want to check in um, with each of them individually and I've just um, onboarded two more uh, virtual assistants and one um, is overseas and I can't wait to just have a chat with her and understand her experience better. I've read her, I mean, I've, we interviewed her and, um, and she's fantastic and, um, but I just want to get in there and understand her career aspirations um, as well, like I know her experience and um, yeah, and then just check in with everybody that we're actually ticking the boxes for them because if you want to build a sustainable team, you want to make sure that we're, you know, we're doing it right and we're giving them what they need as well because then you'll have a happy team and you'll have, if you, the boss can actually, who's leading the, um, leading the business, can touch in with the people that are working with them, then, um, yeah, it's like really open communication. It's a great system of feedback. Stay open to feedback in those talks um, and yeah, it's a, feed, a two way street for feedback and just to check in that we're still ticking boxes for them and it's a good chance to touch in and um, just hear if there's any problems that are arising and deal with them before they become a big problem. Um, and also, so what their goals are, we talked about them, what their goals are. And the third tip is, so get to know um, who they are and, you know, if they've got family, if they've got interests, um, if they've got other skills that they just didn't really think to mention because that wasn't the job that they're applying for. But the more you know them, the more you can have a win-win situation. So, um, and be a good leader and let people um, do what they're good at and um, draw the best out in them. And the fourth tip is actually that, just that as well, is to trust them. You have gotten through a process of selection to get them there. Um, they've been drawn to you for a reason. Um, if they share your vision and they've come in alignment with you, then it's okay then to just trust them and let them get on with their work. And um, there's nothing more um, demotivating for someone than to be micromanaged and to not be trusted. And um, people are there, they have the ability and interest to step up and they're the people that you're recruiting anyway. And um, yeah, and then they know that they can trust you to come to you and, and ask any questions that they need to ask you. Um, and uh, the boss should always be available even if they're being managed by someone else. Um, but we can have like team meetings as well and have team meetings once a week just to check in with everybody um, and to hear from every part of the team how it's all going. And that's a really good way to make sure that everyone stays a team. And um, yeah, we just talk about any potential issues before they become one. So the four tips for um, creating a great team support crew is to share your vision, know your vision and to share your vision, to check in with people at onboarding, like when you're um, interviewing them um, about their goals and aspirations and um, also then know who they are, get to know them and know the other skills that they've got and their passions and their dreams 
and um, just see um, that we check in with them every six months at least um, and have an open door policy where they can talk to you at any other time as well. Um, but in that way, you can just deal with it, any issues. Um, just, you know, when you get that sense that something might be coming on, if there's an open door policy, you can just talk about it before it becomes a problem. And there's a really good book called The One Minute Manager, and that's a great way of um, dealing with feedback and nipping team problems in the bud before they become a real problem. So um, The One Minute Manager, I recommend that one. And the fourth tip is treat them with trust. Trust them, you've employed them as the specialists that they are or the team members that they are. And they've come with skills, knowledge and background and they're capable and people um, express that capability when you give them the space to, to do that. So just um, trust them and then, you know, be there for um, assisting them, guiding them if they need it. Um, and just you know have the open door policy so that they can come if there's a problem and they need someone to help them then they can get the help they need um, but it's a really positive environment okay thanks guys um, I'm really exhausted from a week at Luke Hawkins and I thank you so much to my amazing team for keeping everything going and getting our website over and um, yeah that's a few tips for creating a great team or support crew in your veterinary career or business. And I coach businesses and I coach um, people in their careers. And now I've done Luke Hawkins, I can do breakthroughs as well. So I can yeah, coach anything now. <laughs> so certified practitioner in neuro-linguistic programming and timeline therapy and all these kinds of things. So if you're interested in finding out, just um, click on the link and um, or shoot me a message and I'll we can set up a time and have a chat about how I might be able to help you to love your veterinary career. <laughs> okay, guys, love your veterinary career. I'll talk to you tomorrow.